headsets can take quite a bit of punishment, especially if you do any kind of riding in wet weather. Now, the bearings sit up here and down here, either inside the frame, like on this one, or in cups that push into the frame. And what it means is that they sit in direct line of any water flicked up from your front wheel, not to mention if you clean your bike with a hose pipe or, dare I say, a pressure washer. Now, all it means, though, is that from time to time, we need to take it all apart, clean all the grit out of the headset, and then repack it all with grease to make it weatherproof again. So how do we go about getting to the bearings? Well, there's actually two different types of headsets. There's A headsets, like this one, and then there's traditional headset types, which you don't really see on many bikes from the last 15 years or so. They do work both in fundamentally the same way though, which is to compress the bearings, hold everything tight, but still allowing the fork to turn freely. How they put that compression on the bearings though is how they differ. So headsets have a threaded steerer here and then a nut that tightens down, pulls the forks up, and then a lock nut that keeps everything together. A headset types like this one have a little top cap here that you tighten down and it squeezes the spacers and the stem onto the forks and then it keeps everything tight there too. Okay, as well as keeping your steering feeling nice and smooth, it also prevents the bike from making any unwanted clicking noises, which as you may have guessed from the fact that we did a five part series on it, is a subject close to my heart. In this video, we will talk about the A headset type because that, as I said, dominates most modern bikes these days. Now you don't need a work stand to carry out the procedure, but it does help because it stops the front of the bike dropping onto the ground. So it just stops you scratching your precious bike. Now, all you need for the job really is a four and a five mil Allen key, and potentially a plastic mallet and a torque wrench, but really just these two. We'll start by dropping the front wheel out and then undoing this bot up here, which is usually a five millimeter Allen key. Now, put this to one side because later on, this is gonna be the thing that tightens everything back together. Now, before we proceed any further, we need to look at the spaces on the stem. So these dictate how high your stem is in relation to the rest of the bike. So maybe take a photo if you can't remember it, but in this case, I know I've got 15 mil below the stem and then 15 mil above it. And then we can just pull the stem off the forks. Now, we'll just rest it carefully next to the bike so we don't damage any of the cables. Your forks shouldn't drop out now, but technically there's nothing holding them in place. Remember, 15 mil spaces. There's nothing holding them in place except for the friction of the compression ring down here. So if you can't push the forks out, which I can, fortunately, but if you can't, that's where you might need your little plastic mallet. So the mallet just frees up enough space that we can then pull the top bearing cover off. It should be nice and snug on the steer tube. We'll add that to our little pile. And then this thing here is the compression ring, and that was what was keeping our forks in place. Now you see that since I removed that top bearing cover that I've been holding the fork in place with my spare hand. That's because now there's nothing holding the fork in place. Drop it out carefully and it's at this point that you'll see what type of bearings you'll have. Now you can either have a cartridge bearing, which is where everything is nicely secured in one place, or you can have loose ball bearings which are attached in a kind of metal cage. And at this point, if you've got the loose ball bearings, you just need to be a bit careful because if they're worn and they're dry and there's no grease on there, they can actually end up dropping out. And that's not good. Then you need to go and buy more. Now you quickly see what kind of state the headset's in by how much filth is covering it and whether there's any grease left in it. This one's actually not too bad, but you can see all the grease there. So it's pretty well sealed this. You'll see that we need to thoroughly clean the inside of here and pull the bearing out of the frame and then get fully stuck in with a rag and really clean all the gunk out of the inside. This is possibly the most important bit. And then we'll do the same at the top. You can see much clearer what the inside of the frame looks like. And obviously that's what the bottom looks like too. So give it a thorough clean be absolutely spotless in there. Now if you do need to replace your cartridge bearings then you'll find that generally there'll be a serial code printed on them and that 
tells you what it is that you need to replace. If it's not on there or it's corroded off, then Cane Creek actually have got a really good facility on their website where you type in the make and the model of your bike and it tells you what headset bearings you need. That's if you've got an integrated setup like this. Right, we're all cleaned and ready to go. Before we start replacing stuff, let's talk a little bit more about these cartridge bearings. Now, as you can see, these are different sizes and that is because a lot of modern bikes these days have got a larger diameter bearing for the bottom race and then a smaller diameter one for the top. So it's pretty clear which is which, but just bear that in mind if you can't quite work out what's going on. And then in terms of the orientation of the bearing, again, that should be quite clear. If you just go and put the bearing on, you see that fits nicely. And if we flip it out the other way, it clearly doesn't fit at all. So bearings do generally have a right and a wrong way up. The first step when reassembling is to pack the races with grease inside the frame, top and bottom. A good waterproof Teflon grease is the way to go. You can afford to put quite a bit in there. Any excess will squidge out and then you just wipe it off with a cloth. Just put a bit of grease on the bearings as well. I start with the top one so that it just sits in the frame, it doesn't fall out. When it comes to popping the fork back in, just be ready with this little compression ring here so that you can take your hands away and the fork doesn't fall out. Bearing cover. Snug. And we can just wipe off any excess grease that's just squished out. Right, spacers. Remember, get the correct number above and below. Stem. Be a little bit careful when you're replacing your stem because if the forks and the stem have both been dangling around beneath the frame, then they can sometimes get a bit tangled up. And when you put it all back together again, you realize that you can't turn your handlebars anymore. So just make sure that everything looks as it was. It's important don't tighten it at this point because otherwise when you try and apply compression to the headset, all you're gonna do is squash the bit between the top cap and the stem. So the stem needs to be proper loose. Then top spacers and then your top cap. When it comes to tightening this top cap, you only have to tighten it as much as you need to. And by that I mean you tighten it to the point where the headset stops being loose but before the headset starts feeling sticky or stiff. So you can't really tell when it's on the work stand but generally it's not all that much tighter than that. Front wheel back in. And now we can take the bike off the stand to check the tightness. So, to see whether or not you need to tighten the top cap anymore, apply the front brake and then rock the bike forward and backward. If it needs tightening, you can feel like a kind of clunking just there. You can put your fingers around it to see. This one is actually fine straight off the work stand. So that's all good. And we just need to tighten our stem bolts. And we made sure that the whole thing's straight first of all, of course. And there's nothing more annoying than a wonky stem. Ideally at this point we deploy our torque wrench. So set to just below the value that's written on your stem there. So that's five newton meters, so we'll put it at 4.5 and tighten it up. There are only really two problems that will arise from servicing your headset like that. Firstly, is if the headset's still too loose, in which case you just simply tighten that top cap, making sure that the stem bolts are loose. Otherwise, if the steering feels stiff, then it might be that you've over tightened the headset. It really doesn't need all that much. So again, with the stem loose, loosen that top cap just a fraction and that should sort it out. If it doesn't and this, actually the steering feels stiff but the headset's loose then it might be that you need to go back and replace those bearings I'm afraid. 
That's your headset sorted then. If you want to check out how to service some other bearings on your bike, like your jockey wheels and your derailleur, then make sure you watch that video up there. And then both these procedures are great as part of a tune-up and a spring clean of your bike, the video to which is down there. Finally, mechanical videos keep your bike running smoothly. So don't miss any, subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on me. Sick. Booyah.